Welcome back to my series on surviving narcissistic abuse. Um, if you're watching, I'm sorry that you went through this. Oh God. Um, I already did a video on how the narcissistic abuse affects every area of your life. That was the last video. How it just ruins your social life. It ruins your career. It ruins your love life. It's just you are in a mental prison if you were a child and you were raised by a narcissist or had a narcissist in your family. Um, it's awful. So you can watch that video to see how it just affects and destroys every area of your life. As an adult, if you had this as a child, it's going to ruin all these areas unless you change it and fix it and try to heal yourself and turn this around. So I'm going to do other videos about healing yourself, but I want to talk about in this video the enablers and the flying monkeys, okay? All the people support the narcissist and why they are the way they are. You have to understand that human beings, we are pack animals, okay? We are social creatures. It is our, in our DNA, okay? It's part of us to want to belong, to want to be part of a family, to want to be part of a tribe, okay? We're kind of like wolves in that way. We exist in tribes, in families. We're not like tigers that just, you know, exist independently. Are we are social animals. We need people. So the enablers and the flying monkeys, when you have a narcissist in, in your family, they are so afraid to do anything that's going to disrupt the family unit that they'd rather just put up with the narcissist, take the abuse, allow themselves to be abused, allow their children to be abused. To them, it's better to just go with the flow, not rock the boat, support the narcissist, serve the narcissist, give the narcissist everything that they need because that's all they know. That's what their family has always done. That's the way their family has always functioned from birth, most of them. Um, you'll, you'll see that like people who were, were raised in narcissistic families will grow up and marry narcissists. And then they'll just keep the cycle going into the next generation of don't rock the boat, um, don't disturb anything, don't disrupt anything. This is our family, you know, I'd like to talk about the excuses that the enablers come up with to make excuse, make excuses for the narcissists. Now, the narcissists are, and <laughs> um, they're just plain, nasty, toxic, evil people, okay? If you have one in your family, especially, there's different levels of it, okay? They, we call it cluster B personality types. Um, the ones that have it really bad, like my uncle, um, are going to into the realm of becoming psychopaths, okay? I think my uncle was pretty much a psychopath. You can watch the videos where I discuss um, everything he did when I talk about my own experiences. If you're interested in checking those out, you can watch those. But yeah, he's, he's very much a psychopath. Um, and the, the enablers will make excuses for everything the narcissist does all the time. So you've got this person, the narcissist, with a severe psychological disorder, and everyone else in the family has to pretend that they're okay, that their behavior is normal. It doesn't matter what they do. And I always say that if my uncle burned out an orphanage on Christmas Eve, my mother would have insisted that he was just trying to keep the orphans warm, okay? She would have, if, if, he, if he burned out an orphanage and killed a whole bunch of children, she would have rationalized that he was just trying to keep them warm, and he's such a good guy, and isn't that a wonderful thing? Okay, no matter what the, nurse does, the narcissist does, the enabler will make an excuse. It's unbelievable. And I'm sure, you know, you guys can type away. I'm sure we all have a million stories to tell of how the enabler just supports, supports, supports. You'll also find that the enabler, if you watch an enabler with the narcissist, the enabler knows all the narcissist gestures. Okay, if the narcissist does a hand gesture, like do this or put that over there, the enabler just snaps. Dance, monkey, dance. They know all the narcissist and gestures, mannerisms, and they're constantly watching the narcissist. And if the narcissist does a hand gesture, it's like saying to the enabler, jump. And then the enabler thinks, oh, how high? How high do I have to jump? It's like this instantaneous gut reaction. And the narcissist doesn't even have to talk to the enabler. The enabler knows all their body language gestures and will just snap to it, do whatever the narcissist wants. Now, the enablers will come up with excuses and they'll sit you down, especially if you're the scapegoat child. If you're the child that's being abused or even if you're a grown-up child, 
Okay, if you've been raised in this family and you're still being scapegoated and you're still being abused, this is what the enabler will do. The enabler will pull you aside and be like, oh, I know that the narc, they won't say that, but they'll be like, I know he or she can be really difficult, but all families have difficult people. You know what they say, there's one in every family. And this is ours, and I know he can be difficult, but if you could just be a love and take one for the team and put up with the abuse, because we all do, we all do. We're all in this boat with you. We're all putting up with them. Please and thank you for putting up with it. You're so good for putting up with it. And then the next day will happen, and the enabler will wake up no matter what psychotic thing the narcissist has done. The enabler will go to bed and wake up and be like, today will be good. And they just live each day, like they compartmentalize each day. Like it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter if I was screamed at, humiliated, verbally assaulted, physically assaulted. Um, doesn't matter, that was yesterday. Today is gonna be better because I am gonna do everything I can to serve the king or the queen or the dictator and make sure that the, this person, the narcissist, is, is just in a good mood today and everything's gonna be fine. Yesterday doesn't matter. It's all about today. Today's gonna be completely different. There's no logical reason why it should be different, but the enabler convinces themselves that if they just walk on eggshells and do everything right, the narcissist will be pleased by them and then they'll have such a good day together. So the enabler is in this constant, constant prison of their own making where no matter what the narcissist does, they will support, 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 support. Okay. Now I've known a lot of people who have narcissistic families. I'm going to use my friend as an example here. Okay. Her mom, raging narcissist. The mother pretty much destroyed her brother. The brother, every relationship he had with a woman, the narcissistic mother sabotaged, um, and then the brother eventually had a stroke because of all the tension of dealing with this psycho narcissist. So my friend is the daughter and sister of the crazy narcissistic mother and the brother who is now an invalid. Okay, This friend has her father, the enabler, so high up on a pedestal. When she talks about her father, it's like, oh, my father. My father was such a wonderful man and my father was so good to me and my father was wonderful my father was a saint my father my father my father and i had to say to her look i'm sorry you can hate me for saying this but i'm going to tell you the truth because i'm your friend and i love you your father was not that great of a guy if he had really been a great father he would have taken you out of that situation. He would have looked at the situation with all this verbal and emotional and sometimes physical abuse that was happening to his children, his son and his daughter. If he was really a great father, he would have said enough and removed you from that situation. But he didn't. He chose to stay. He chose to enable. He chose to support the narcissist. He chose to put the narcissist above his own children because the enablers always do. It's always narcissist needs, children's needs, my needs. Or um, if they're just doing it because they don't want them, to, they don't want the enabler does not want to be targeted. And it'll be narcissist needs, my needs, kids needs. But the narcissist is always number one. They're always at the top. So I said to her, I said, your father was not that great of a guy. And I met so many people who were raised in these families where there's one crazy narcissistic dysfunctional lunatic. And then because as a child, social creature, again, social creature, you need someone so desperately. So the parent that is not the narcissist, who doesn't seem like the monster in your head and in your heart gets elevated so high because by comparison to the narcissist, they seem so wonderful. But the enabler is just as damaging to the child as the narcissist, if not more so, because the enabler's love is, it's toxic because they're constantly encouraging you to take the abuse. And that is not love, that is toxicity. Okay, if the enabler is always encouraging you to go back to the narcissist, that is not a good parent and that is not love. So I have to say to my friend, I said, your father was not that great of a guy. He was an enabler. If he was a good parent, he would have protected you from your mother. He would have gotten you out of that situation. He would have protected his children because that is what good parents do, period. And I said, you need to get mad at him. I know he's dead, but you need to get mad at him. So yeah, we tend to, as the abused children, elevate the enabler, such a wonderful person, because we need someone to love us and we need to be loved. And by comparison, the enabler is so 
much nicer than the crazy narcissist. So we build the enabler up in our minds. So my friend heard me. She was upset. She said, you're right. You are right. And I said, you need to get mad at him. And even if the enabler is dead, like her father passed away, you still need to get mad at them because it's not about them. It's about you. Go to their grave, get their picture out, have a conversation because they will hear you. The afterlife exists. I firmly believe that. My mom died. I got her picture out. I sat it down and I had a long conversation where I yelled at her and told her how angry I was at her and how she was a coward and I hate the fact that she was a coward and I'm ashamed and I got really, really mean. And an hour later, her her ashes fell off the dresser and her picture fell on the floor and I felt it go through me. I knew she heard me. So they will hear you. You need to get mad at the enabler. The enabler left you in the situation, put up with the narcissist, told you to take the abuse, and in some cases encouraged the narcissist to abuse you. Because as long as you, the child, was being targeted, the enabler felt safe. That is the reality of your enabler parent. They were just as damaging, they were just as destructive, and they caused as much trauma to you as the narcissist. They are as guilty as the narcissist. The enabler is also a child abuser. And the enabler is going to have extreme karma to make up in the afterlife or their next life. Because enabling or allowing or excusing child abuse karmically is just as bad as abusing the child yourself. So the enabler even more so than the narcissist has more bad karma to make up because I don't think the narcissist, they're really, really bad. Again, going into the, the realm of psychopath. Um, I don't think there's a real soul in there. Um, and I'll get, I'll get into that in another video, but the enabler, so much karma to make up, so much karma to make up because it is child abuse. Allowing, excusing, encouraging, excusing child abuse karmically is as bad as being a child abuser yourself. So, yeah, good luck enabler, good luck in the afterlife. It's my upcoming future novel about past lives, reincarnation, and karma. It's a work of satire. I have a problem with the fact that people think that once you die and you go to the afterlife, all your problems are solved. Okay, so it's a work of satire. The angels and spirit guides are condescending <laughs> um, people that the main character can't stand because they're just so, you know, old and experienced and he, you know, the main character can't stand them and all your insecurities and traumas follow you into the afterlife. So it's a work of satire that's sort of a reaction against this belief that once you die, everything is just great. I don't think that that's true because you still take yourself with you. Take all your insecurities and traumas with you when you go. And if there's people over there that you knew in life that you had resentment towards, you're still going to have resentment towards them. So I don't think death is like the, you know, this, you go to this perfect paradise where all you do is float on clouds all day long. So that's my novel. It's sort of a reaction against that. And there's excerpts that you can read and I dare you to read them. And if you don't laugh, um, <laughs> I dare you to read them and try not to laugh, okay? And I would love and appreciate feedback on the excerpts. And then if you're interested, there's an email list that you can um, add your name and your email address, and I will notify you if and when this novel becomes available. Originally, when I started this series, I thought I would put it on a, a different YouTube channel because this YouTube channel is all about magic and magical tools and witchcraft and spirituality. Um, but I decided not to separate them for a couple of reasons. I want to talk about spiritually and karmically what happens to the narcissist what happens to the enabler what happens to you what you need to do to heal yourself maybe why you were born into this family and how it's not your karma to stay in this family so i want to get into the spiritual aspects of this whole narcissistic abusive family what's going on in this world but also what's going on in, you know the fifth dimension in the afterlife why you were born into this family why you don't have to stay in it, what their karma is going to be afterwards, what your karma is now. So I want to get into that into future videos, but that's why I've decided not to split it up into two different YouTube channels to keep it on one channel. And also I find a lot of people who were abused are very much attracted to witchcraft and paganism because it's all about self-empowerment. So it's been a way of healing myself. I will talk about that in future videos, but that is why I've decided not to separate them and make it two channels to keep it together because my spiritual beliefs are going to be highly incorporated into this series 
So when dealing with enablers, there's a lot of things that they do that are offensive. If you have your own life story, they're going to come in and want to rewrite it for you. For example, I'm going to use my own life story as an example. So if I was to write up my, my life story, my childhood experience into like one paragraph, okay, I would say, this is my life story, okay. My mother was a codependent enabler who had an emotional incestuous relationship with her brother, went to her brother for everything, went to him the way a wife would go to a husband, was pretty much a slave to him, did everything he wanted, uh, let him work her to death and died young of cancer because of all the toxicity she absorbed from him. Okay, that is my life story. The enablers, all my families would do this to me. They would all do this to me. They would like come in with the red pen and be like, your mother, cross out codependent enabler, was such a wonderful person. <laughs> cross out everything they don't like. And then when they talk about, oh, your you know, psychotic, narcissistic uncle, cross that out. Wonderful, amazing, supportive brother. Okay, they have the story of your life in front of them and they're gonna wanna come in with the red pen, cross everything out, cross all your truths out and replace them. Be like, your mother was such a wonderful, loving, supportive mother. She loved you so much. She did everything she should for you. She did everything right by you. She was wonderful. She was amazing. Okay, they're going to come in and they're going to make excuses for the other enablers and they're going to make excuses for the narcissist and they're going to try to rewrite your life story for you, which is so offensive because you lived it. They didn't live it. It's your life. It's your story. It's your experience. It's not theirs. So, it helps to have a couple of questions. I mean, it helps to have a couple of statements in your pocket. Just pull them out and say them. Say, look, I lived through this. You didn't. You don't get to rewrite my life story and walk away from them. Okay? Have a sentence like that prepared. The next time they start with this bullshit about, oh, your mother was so great. Your father was so great. When they were horrible people in reality, don't let them rewrite your life story for you. It's so offensive. It's be like, um... I was there, you weren't, you don't get to tell me what happened. That's another sentence you can use. Have a couple of these sentences, memorize, say it out, just dump it on them and walk away. You do not have to listen to them, this crap about telling you that you weren't really abused. Now, I have another video about why I cut off my whole family. You can click here to watch that one. I finally got rid of them because it was so, it's so... Oh God, it's so freeing that now that they're gone. I was taking adverse childhood experience tests, trying to prove to them that I was an abused child. My score is a seven. If it's a six or above, you could have had your lifespan shortened by, by 20 years because of the trauma. Mine is a seven. I took it, tried to show it to them. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to see it. They didn't want to talk about it. Just like the blinders come on. I went to the doctor for my bad posture um, that is a result of being curled in a ball as a child and terrified out of my mind. Just, you know, this hunched over neck and back problems. Went to the doctor, asked them, can this go back to my childhood? Oh, absolutely. It steps back from your childhood. Your bad posture is so bad, it probably started. So I've had to do a ton of exercises to try to fix it and make it better. Went to them. This is what I heard from a medical professional. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that anything was wrong with your childhood. So anybody will not allow you to talk about the fact that you were abused and will not allow you to open up about what happened to you is abusing you again. So if your enablers are shutting you up and saying, no, that didn't happen. I don't want to hear about it. I can't listen to this. Don't talk to me. Ah. They're abusing you all over again. You're still being abused because the fact that they will not allow you to have a conversation about what really happened to you. They will not allow you to speak your truth. They're abusing you over again. That is not love. That is not what a family should be. So I highly recommend you take a look at all your family members, every single one of them. If you can honestly, and you can write this down, put their name on the top of a piece of paper and then ask yourself this question, write it all down. Can I talk to them about the childhood trauma without them making excuses for it? And write down a yes or a no. If the answer is no, don't even bother trying to talk to them ever again. Just don't. You just don't because it's like they're in a cult. Narcissistic families operate like a cult and you're never going to get them out of it. It would take years of cult deprogramming and a specialized 
therapist to do this, to get them out of this cult of narcissism that they are in. And if you honestly say, I can't have a conversation about what happened to me, then there's someone that you need to either completely remove from your life or just totally limit your contact with and have no expectations, no expectations that this person is going to support you in any way. And that's just the cold hard truth. That's who they are. So as someone who recently got rid of all the enablers and all the flying monkeys and all the people who were supporting the narcissist and telling me that my abuse wasn't real and it didn't happen, um, you know, now that they're gone, I'm getting all these weird memories of like always being disrespected, always being talked down to, always, you know, it was always okay to treat me like a punching bag. The whole family, all these weird memories are popping up of things I haven't thought about in years now that they're gone. Because once you leave a toxic family, it's like everything gets very, very clear about what happened. And uh, my next video I think is gonna be about the inner critic. How I can be doing the most nothing thing. If I'm in the kitchen and I'm reorganizing the cabinets or just pulling something out of the cabinet and a bunch of pots and pans fall out, and hit the floor or just fall down inside the cabinet, the narcissist voice comes, oh, you're a fucking idiot. How could you be so fucking stupid? Why are you, you're all, you are always like this. You're always like this. You're always clumsy. It's always a permanent fixture of your personality when a narcissist attacks you, right? It's always, you are a slob, stupid, lazy, a klutz. It's always this permanent fixture. They never say, oh, uh, it's too bad you did that. Could you please pick that up? It's always, they have to like freaking go for your jugular and tell you that you are permanently then the negative word. Okay. So I can be doing the most nothing thing. And if I knock something over or spill something, it's like the voice just, there it is in the head. It's been so ingrained into my head that only a fucking idiot would do it this way. Only a fucking idiot would have made that mistake. If you were smart and intelligent and articulate like me, you never would have done something like that. Um, so yeah, the narcissist, they love to put this voice in your head that you're less than them, less than them, less than them. And you start to believe it after you hear it for a while. So dealing with the inner voice, that's a whole other video. <laughs> all right. So, but I can tell you this, since I got rid of all the enablers, the voice is getting quieter and quieter and quieter. It's going away because I know my truth now. And I have my truth now and I have owned my truth now and I don't allow anybody in my life that tries to rewrite my life story or change my truth. It's my story, my life, I lived it. They don't get to tell me it didn't happen. They don't get to tell me that my mother, my mother was a wonderful person, that my uncle is this wonderful, amazing businessman and he's so smart, he's so talented. They're not here to rewrite my story for me. So when that voice comes in, I just tell him to shut the fuck up and get back to whatever I was doing. All right, so please comment if this has been your experience, if something similar happened to you, if you can relate to this, and let me know about the enablers in your life, okay? And ask yourself why you're clinging on to them, and if you're ready to let them go, if you're not ready to let them go, leave it in the comments, have a discussion. I will respond to as many as I can, but help each other out too, guys, okay? If you see someone's comment, you can relate to them, and you have advice, leave a comment on somebody else's comment. <laughs> Because we all need healing, okay? We all need to heal together. All right, but please understand that the enabler is in a cult and they're never going to get out of it and you can't help them. So you've got to help yourself. Get over the idea of helping them. It's not going to happen. You can't do it. You can't fix them or change them. You can only work on yourself. But please subscribe if you can relate to this because more videos are coming about how to heal from all this crap. <sighs> All right, thank you for watching, blessed be.